Hi everyone, welcome back to September and my YouTube channel, which is my no buy month. If you're not new around these parts though, you'll know that I am deep into my second year of a beauty no buy. So if you like no buy content, content about using what you have, about finishing what you have, please do consider subscribing to my channel. And on that theme, today is an empties video. I'm a little bit behind with filming my empties and as a result the empties that I'm going to talk about today are from the months of May, June and July and then I'll do a separate August empties video. My July empties were absolutely abysmal. I finished like so little product in July that I knew my August empties would be a pretty massive set so I thought we'll just do these, get these out of the way and August will be their own video. As always to keep track of my inventory and my total both in terms of quantity and worth I do do my spreadsheet of my empties every month and take it out of my beauty inventory so in today's video the skincare that I'm going to be showing you is worth $531.01. My hair care, I only use two hair care products and they came together to be worth $11.60. And the makeup products that I've finished up in those three months were worth $136.33 for anyone who's particularly interested in my reverse rouge challenge. So yeah, let's just get on into it and see what those values look like in terms of product because believe me, it is not as much as you would think it would be for that worth. I think what most of you are probably interested in is makeup. I finished two foundations, the first of which was this one from Laura Mercy and it is their Silk Cream Foundation. Now this is so old, it's from before they reformulated the Silk Cream Foundation so I can't comment on the new formulation which is currently on the market but I did really enjoy this one. It also took absolutely ages to finish. It was really good value for money in that sense and money wise this was worth $48. If this formulation was still available I would repurchase it but I know when the, when it was reformulated which was donkey's years ago now a lot of people didn't like the new one so I'm not totally intrigued about the new one and I'm not going to go check it out. The other foundation that I finished is this little sample one which was still worth the best part of $8. It was worth $7.83. It's from Longcomb and it's their Tinted Ole. This was not the right shade for me but I just decided to knock it out over the summer months when I could more likely get away with it. It is still I think this is shade 010. I would potentially buy this foundation at some point but not in this shade and although I'm saying I would potentially buy it. There are still other foundations I'm more excited about. Worth $21. I finished my MAC Studio Fix Concealer. I actually have another one of this already. This was the shade NW15 and I have the shade NC15 which is actually slightly better for me. I really like this concealer. It's full coverage, better on spots than on under eyes other than if like me you're very oily. I do really like it and it is very full coverage. Going slightly back the way in terms of the routine, this is from Becca, it's their backlight priming filter. I do like this, it kind of looks like there's product left in this but I promise there's not, I have finished it. Um, see, nothing else is coming out. But I do have the purple one which is the first light priming filter and I do prefer that. I feel that the purple one kind of brings down the redness in my skin. This one I think is probably good for people maybe with a slightly darker skin tone, a bit less red in their skin tone. It was nice, obviously I finished it but I just wouldn't go out of my way to purchase it again. It's also something that I feel I need to pair with another primer to keep my sort of oil at being, keep my um, keep my makeup in place. I feel like this is more about giving a glow than it is about creating something for other makeup to stick to, which is generally what I want my primer to do. So I do like it, but I wouldn't repurchase it. Worth $1, I finished this little sample of the Too Faced Glitter Glow. I have the full size of this. I just wanted to get rid of this little sample that had been kicking about for ages. I really like this product. It doesn't irritate my eyes. It keeps things in place. I don't have too much more to say about it. I would recommend it though. Worth $22, I finished my mini Hourglass Diffuse Light Ambient Lighting Powder. There you go. There's the empty pan. I did really like this. I would definitely, definitely purchase the full size of this. I think if you've got lots of kind of redness in your skin, Diffuse Light's a really, really lovely shade. Um, I know everyone went a bit mad for dim light, but I think that really emphasises the redness of my skin. I felt this was much more flattering on my kind of pale, prone to redness skin tone. I finished two lip balms. So one is the Dr. Lip Nipple Balm, the other one from Clarins. I've called this a lip balm. They call it lip gloss, but it's their Natural Light Instant Lip Perfector. This is in the shade 06. Absolutely loved both of these. Both of them were super moisturising. Um, and I would repurchase either of them. Um, this one's got a little bit of colour to it, not anything spectacular though. I still think of it as more of a lip balm than a colour product. This one was clear. I really, really liked both of them and I would very happily repurchase both. That is what 
$136.33 worth of makeup looks like when it's been finished up and brought together. Hair care is the smallest category and the first thing I finished hair care wise was this little sample size of the Bumble and Bumble hairdressers invisible oil. This was worth $1.60. I would 100% repurchase this. I really enjoy this hairdressers invisible oil range. I've got very fine hair. It gets weighed down really easily and I feel like this puts moisture into it but doesn't weigh it down. Although it's oily I don't feel like it makes my hair more greasy and more oily. I definitely would potentially repurchase full size of this. It takes me ages to go through hair oil because I use it so sparingly. It's not something I'll be buying anytime soon but once I've gone through the rest of my stash this is a potential repurchase. And then if you've watched my Florida haul you know I bought the full size of this when I was on holiday. For those of you who are new to my channel, although I'm into the second year of a beauty spending ban, the caveat to that has been that I can spend when I'm on holiday I feel it helps restrict my purchases, makes me think about what I'm going to buy and doesn't encourage the kind of spending addiction that I had in the environment that I had it in. That is my kind of that is my only exception is when I'm on holiday I can purchase things. When I was in Florida I bought the full size of this, it's a dry bar detox conditioner. This little mini size is worth $10 towards my empties total and basically at first I thought of this as a dry conditioner and I was like my hair's really fine, it's really soft. Generally I'm always kind of trying to put texture and grit and almost a little bit of damage into my hair rather than keep it conditioned because I want my hair to hold and to basically be as kind of big and messy as kind of fine limp hair can possibly be. But when I stopped thinking about this as being a conditioner and started thinking about it as a detangling spray, I started to really, really enjoy it. I don't actually like to brush my hair too often, I just run my fingers through it. So if I've got a lot of tangles, that can push me to have to brush it earlier than I want to. I feel like a little bit of this through the lens, I can get my fingers through it and I don't have to start brushing it and making it flat again whilst I'm in my, my hair routine, which I keep getting asked about. So I will potentially film a video talking you through my hair routine. If you've got any specific questions on that, please leave them down below and I will keep them in mind when filming that video. So two hair products worth $11.60. On to skincare, I used two sashes up in London that I didn't bring home with me, so I've got $2 towards my total there. Don't even remember what they were, so they can't have been that memorable. And I used two other sashes during those three months at home. One was the Sizzly Eau Tropical Body Lotion. It was fine, but I definitely wouldn't repurchase it. I'm not into these tropical sweet scents. That's just not my jam at all. And the other one was the new, it's probably not that new anymore, but it was new when I got these samples Clinique Eye Serum which I really really liked. I would definitely potentially buy this once I've gone through all of the eye cream that I have which will definitely take at least another year. So not anytime soon but definitely a potential future purchase. Four dollars of sashes were used up worth $92.80 I finished up this size of the Lancome La Vie Belle. This was a kind of special size which is why it's a bit of a weird amount. I think it was a 40ml or something. This was originally, I got it in a gift set along with like some body products and things so I think it was one of those kind of only released at Christmas not available to buy normal, normally sizes. Um, this was lovely if you like a sort of powdery, sort of musky scent. It was very nice but I just, it wasn't spicy enough for me. It was more on, I like a kind of musky, ambery scent but I do like it to be a little bit more spicy. This was very kind of powdery, sophisticated. For somebody who is not a, not the kind of person who loses their temper is, and I know that sounds ridiculous but I definitely, I love fragrance but I definitely put personalities on fragrance and this is definitely for somebody who never loses their temper and is very chilled out and you know is very sophisticated and could wear white cashmere sweaters without any worry of spilling their pasta down themselves and that is just not me in the slightest so this was a nice enough scent but it's just not for me so I will not be repurchasing that or purchasing it since it was a gift in the first place but not a PR gift of anything. One that I would actually repurchase was this one. I really like this from Agent Provocateur. It's the Matrice scent but I don't think they actually make this anymore which is really frustrating because this was such a beautiful scent. This was really, this was exactly what the other one was missing. There was a musky note to this but it was kind of a little bit spicy and yeah I really enjoyed it. This was exactly the opposite of the other one. It was powdery but with some spice and I really really enjoyed this and this was worth six dollars and 37 cents. I then used up three sample perfumes at dollar each so Tom Daxon Riven Oak, Tom Daxon Iridium and then the Malin and Gats Cannabis. These were all okay but I definitely wouldn't be inspired to go out and buy the full size of any of them. I will get the body products out of the way so I finished up this from Bath and Body Works. It's their shower gel in Mahogany Woods which they sell, sell as a men's scent but 
oh it's absolutely beautiful I really like generally I really like scents that are kind of marketed at men um, so yeah, if you really like sort of woodsy, sexy man smells in your shower, I really recommend this. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really like Bath & Body Works shower gels anyway. I don't say this is a two-in-one hair and body wash. I never used it on my hair, but I would definitely repurchase it. And it was $12.50. Worth $4.40. Finished my Kiehl's Ultimate Strength Hand Salve. Oh, throwing the other bit away. Um, but this one's got the name on it, so this is the bit that matters anyway. I would definitely repurchase this. It's quite thick. Um, is definitely kind of intensive. I really enjoyed it though. I definitely would repurchase it and it's just a very kind of clean scent. It's definitely a thick heavy one. It's not one if you want one that sinks in absolutely instantly but if you want to feel like you're really moisturising your skin this one is excellent and I would definitely repurchase it. On to cleansers, toners and essence I finished up this which is a little first cleanser. It's a sample size or a travel size of the Burt Bees cleansing oil this was worth $2.67 and I just used it to remove my makeup which it did quite effectively. Very potentially repurchase it. It was quite a thin oil, it wasn't like a thick, this was quite a kind of verging on watery sort of runny oil but I did really enjoy it and I would potentially pick it up in the future. Worth $29 and something I would absolutely never pick up again is the Kiehl's Calendula Deep Cleansing Foaming Face Wash. This just left my skin, I have got oily skin but this just left it feeling stripped and tight. This took me absolutely years to finish off. I ended up, I had it in my shower and I was just using it intermittently and then I decided I had to really focus on it and just get it out. Because I was using it so intermittently, it was down to kind of round about here and it was just like, it's half done, like just get it finished and then you can have the total towards your reverse rouge total. So I banged it out, but absolutely never again. This was just horrible, it left my skin feeling tight, itchy. I like the toner that goes with this and I've actually got the face mask that goes with this range as well. I liked both of them but the cleanser is just not for me. I just, I don't like foaming gel based cleansers. They're just not for me at all. And a product that I used with that because this was all about soothing my skin and putting moisture back into it. It's worth $8.50 and it's a little mini of the Origins Mega Mushroom and they call it treatment lotion. It's basically a toner and I would potentially repurchase this. I've got other toners that I probably liked better. I really like the Kiehl's Clearly Corrective one but when my skin's like aggravated or very dehydrated this is definitely one that I enjoy so I would potentially repurchase it. Then the last product is this from Hada Labo. It was worth $12.50. It's their essence basically. Now my friend Lauren recommended this. She absolutely loves it and I think she's repurchased it several times. This was a good product and this is where I start to get a bit worried about myself sometimes because by the time I was finished this I was just so ready for it to be done. I was so bored of using it. Essence is the category that I've actually out of everything managed to get it down so that I have one left now and it's just kind of really illustrated to me how much I like having choice and having the option to flip between products because I was just so bored of looking at this. Um, so it was a great product. Product performed but I was just like I want something different. Like I'm bored of you. I'm bored of looking at you and and that, that kind of bothers me a little bit about my own habits but I have finished it now, I'm ready to use something else just to get a break but it definitely performed, I would recommend it and I potentially would repurchase it. The product itself is good, nothing bad to say about it. Okay so you guys can see there, I'm not going to go into these in too much detail. At the end there we've got a little mini of the Kiehl's Midnight Recovery oil so I've got full size of that which I'm going to work through. I'm not a massive fan of essential oils, definitely not a lavender fan whenever my eczema's flared up that makes it worse so it is a product I can only use intermittently. I will try and finish the full size one that I have as well but once that is done I definitely wouldn't repurchase that. That little mini size was worth $6.13. It's a little 4ml size. Then next to this from Kat Berkey it was worth $27.50 for 5ml so based on based on price alone I don't really see me repurchasing this. It's retinol with a vitamin C in it which and obviously really good ingredients. I just don't feel, I think I've kind of got my boxes ticked for vitamin C and I don't know, I've got other retinols to use up but I don't, I don't feel personally that I'm there with my skincare yet. I don't feel like I need a retinol. I don't think I'm at that stage yet and I think sometimes on YouTube and the beauty community we can see people with these really elaborate skincare routines and people who are like 24 using retinol and I don't know, I think in my opinion you kind of need to have something to step up to at some point and I think retinol is my thing that I'm like oh let's leave that till I'm at least in like my 30s rather than using it right now. So I don't at the moment have any real intentions to purchase any retinol products. I finished up this Hydro Essential from Clarins worth 29 50 
I really like that actually. I definitely would potentially repurchase that. The Ordinary Niacinamide, which is obviously kind of takes down blemishes and irritation for oily skin. I potentially would repurchase that. It wasn't that exciting to use, like I don't feel like like the dropper was quite a... It wasn't a very elegant product to use. I realised I'm kind of willing to pay, at the moment, how I feel is that I'm willing to pay a little more to have a nice experience when using a product and I don't feel that The Ordinary really ticks that box of being like a nice experience. But the product did work and, you know, I suppose it depends what my budget is next time I'm purchasing a product like that so maybe I would repurchase it, the product itself was fine, I just didn't love the whole experience of using it because of the packaging and I know that sounds shallow but it is what it is. The last product is from Rodeo, it's worth $33.15 and it's a little 15ml sample of their Dragon's Blood Sculpting Gel. It was absolutely fine but $33.15 for this size, I can't really see me committing to a bigger size. It may just be the same thing as it is with retinol where I'm not going to see enough of a difference in my skin at the moment from something that's an anti-aging product or a sculpting product or whatever so maybe I shouldn't even be giving anyone my opinion on it but my opinion as of like a 28 year old who's just finished it is that it's it didn't make any conceivable difference to my skin so I don't think it's a product that is for me at the moment. I finished two moisturisers the first of which was the Origins Ginseng Little Mini Size worth £2.85 um, I've got multiples of this just because they're always giving out samples of it so I definitely will finish up the rest of them. It's a nice lightweight brightening moisturiser. I would potentially repurchase this you know at some distant point in the future when I've finished all the moisturisers that I currently own. Another one I would 100% repurchase and one of the things that is one of my most favourite things out of what I've finished. Darfan Hydra Skin Light worth $15.60 for a 15ml size. It's just beautiful if you've got oily skin and you just want a really lightweight layer of hydration. This is lovely. I really like Darfan products in general. This is exactly what I was talking about with the ordinary thing, like this isn't dissimilar to that Origins moisturiser I just talked about and I would definitely buy the Origins one. I like Origins products, I think they perform well but something about the whole experience of using a Darfan product, not so much maybe this because it's obviously just in like kind of sample packaging but generally I just like Darfan products, I think they're a joy to actually use, the experience of using them is very nice and I think that ultimately is in the price so you know that that's partly what you're paying for when you buy a luxury product and I think as long as you know and acknowledge that, that's fine if you choose to do that. So I would definitely choose to repurchase this even at a premium price tag. On to sort of miscellaneous skincare products and worth 564 I finished up this from Ren. It's their anti-pollution face mist. This is kind of similar to that Kiehl's one. It's a lot of sort of essential oils and fragrance and there is just no way I would repurchase it. This was in a gift with purchase from Space NK in 2017 and I got three of those gifts with purchases because, you know, used to have a bit of a problem with spending. So I have another two of these to finish and I'm going to finish three of them but yeah I definitely would not repurchase this product um, and if you don't like essential oils I wouldn't recommend it for you. Worth $41 I finished this from Kiehl's Epidermal Retexturizing Microderm Abrasion which is just like a manual exfoliator. It is absolutely wonderful, super gritty, very small particles, very scrubby. You really feel the difference in your skin when you've used this. I do try to stick to a chemical exfoliator most of the time because my skin is sensitive but it's quite oily and I do kind of feel like you need a good scrub every so often so it takes me ages to finish these. I don't think I finished any kind of manual exfoliants last year when I was tracking my empties so it has taken me like a year and a half to finish this because of how infrequently I use it but when my skin is just feeling rough and feels like it needs retextured basically exactly as the name suggests this is the product that I go to. If you haven't tried this go to a Kiehl's store and get one of the shop assistants to show it to you to demonstrate it, feel it on your hand. If you can get booked in for a mini facial with Kiehl's and get them to use it on your actual face it's just a wonderful product. I really highly recommend it. Speaking of chemical exfoliators this is from Kiehl's as well and this is their nightly refining micro peel concentrate. This little mini size was worth $7.20. I have the full size which I will be finishing and I really like it. It's a very gentle exfoliator. Although it's a chemical one it's made with sensitive skin in mind. It takes two weeks of nightly use to see the full results because it's designed to be a little more gentle but I really like it. I think it's a lovely product. It doesn't irritate my skin and I'm a big fan of it. So yeah I have the full size of this and I will also finish that at some point but it does. You need so little that it does take absolutely ages to finish these products. On to masks which is my last category. I finished two of these sleeping masks from Clarins from the new My Clarins range. These are worth $8.10 each. Again throwing away the bottom. 
absolutely fine but nothing particularly special I wouldn't rush to repurchase this I don't think these did any more than just like a decent night cream the my Clarins range is aimed at sort of 18 to 25 year old skins so it's not going to be super hyper effective it is supposed to be for people just kind of establishing a skincare routine I used them up because obviously they were little samples that I got for free um, but I definitely wouldn't go and repurchase these. One thing I would repurchase 100 times over is this mask from Sizzly. It's worth $162, so this is super premium skincare, but this is wonderful. This is the sort of thing, you use this, you can tell the next day that you've used it. It is supposed to be kind of firming and smoothing, which obviously, as I've said with loads of these products, is not something I've been super looking for, but I do feel like it's very hydrating. I feel like it brightens my skin, and I feel like as well if I've ever got a breakout, it seems to calm the skin down and help it to repair quicker. It seems to stop me getting scars when I've had a spot. I absolutely just love this. I can't say enough good things about it. Obviously, it's very much dependent on where you've got the disposable income and the budget to spend on this but if I had to switch every skincare product that I own other than one over to being drugstore skincare this is the one premium product I would keep it is absolutely brilliant so big 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 fan of this if you've not tried it go get a sample obviously get a sample don't commit straight to a full size at this kind of price point but this has been worth every penny for me and I was actually quite sad when I finished it because I don't have it anymore now and I've got so many face masks that I need to finish before I can remotely think about replacing this one but it is just I think it's probably my favorite skincare product I've ever used if I'm honest it is so wonderful really lived up to the hype I finished this little small size of the Peter Thomas Roth this is the rose stem cell mask which I actually started using after I finished the sizzly one and this just isn't a patch on the sizzly one I would use it in the same instances and it's again it's supposed to be kind of repairing but if I had a breakout with the sizzly one it would really calm it down it would help it to repair with without scarring etc. This just really felt like a kind of thick moisturiser. It didn't ever do anything to calm my skin or seem to repair it or encourage anything to sort of heal quicker so I definitely wouldn't bother repurchasing this one out in this. I mean Peter Thomas Roth isn't exactly a budget range so I would definitely, if I was going to put my money into either, it would 100% be the Sizzly one. We've got three sheet masks here and um, we're just going to casually pretend that we didn't see this one because this has been put in the wrong box and it should be in my August empties. It is not on my list for this so let's pretend this was never in that video. It is a nice product, I would recommend it, but it's not being counted into this total so we'll just not acknowledge that and we'll talk about these two instead. So first sheet mask that I've got here is from Boots. It's worth $3.25 and it is their own brand sheet mask with charcoal and willow bark. This is phenomenal um, and again at the other end of the spectrum from the Sizzly, this is a more budget friendly product. This is brilliant. If every budget friendly product was like this there would be no reason to ever shop high end. If you've got a breakout this just calms it down it does that thing when it seems to make your breakouts go away quicker but without also seeming to pull them straight to a head either you know how sometimes you use products especially if they're like charcoal based it can seem to pull it out before it makes it go away this seems to just sort of zip through the whole process your skin's brighter it just looks clearer you've got an instant difference I'm getting quite skeptical about masks if I'm honest I feel like they're a really problematic category for me in my inventory just in terms of the sheer volume of masks that I own um, but this one is a particularly good one that I will definitely continue to repurchase. And then last product of this empties video from Origins is their Flower Fusion Mask. This is a rose one. So it says the rose one is just a hydrating sheet mask and I would totally agree with that. Worth $7. It's just an intense shot of hydration. But I do really like a sheet mask. As I say, I don't think masks have any great long-term benefits, but I think a sheet mask is phenomenal for a sort of on-the-day pick me up especially if you've been traveling or you've got an event or something special is going on I'm very into a sheet mask as a one-off thing what I'm definitely going to try and cut down on in future is the amount of actual masks that I buy and just kind of have one of each type of mask because I think once you've got a charcoal mask you've got a charcoal mask you've got a charcoal mask like there's no need to have loads of different types but I do enjoy a sheet mask so I will continue to repurchase these ones or their equivalent again I like this one but I do think again a hydrating sheet mask is a hydrating sheet mask is a hydrating sheet mask and whether you've got the Origins version or the Boots version or whatever version they're all much of a muchness they're an instant pick-me-up boost um, and they're very good at their job that is it that is the end of this empties video so as I said at the start the skin here you've just seen was worth $531.01 
the hair care products were worth $11.60 and the makeup products were worth $136.33. So who would have thought it would have added up to all that just to look at those products? Thank you very much for watching. I know this has been quite a long video, but I do think they're very valuable videos to get people's insights on products they've actually finished up because I think so often we're so busy looking at what's new that we don't look at what people have actually used to the end and have really good informed opinions on. So thank you for watching. I hope it's been helpful. I hope it's been enjoyable. Let me know down below about those hair care questions and I will um, kind of start planning out a hair video and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!